Hi, my name is Ronit Mukherjee and I'm an Applications Engineer with Go Engineer. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the Load Case Manager, which is available in the Simulation Professional and the Premium Package. Now, the Load Case Manager lets you define different load cases by combining and suppressing the load features that we've applied in the External Loads folder. It can go a step further and let you create some linear mathematical equations to combine the different loads and calculate the results. For example, if I wanted to double the load A and um, multiply four and a half times load B, I, will, I can easily set up this equation in the load case manager. And once the study is done running, it will quickly compute results for our various combination of the loads. I can also post process the results for each load case scenario and the load case combinations as well. So let's see how this works. Over here, I have a simple scaffolding assembly. And as you notice, I've uh, set up my simulation study already. So you got to have a parent study already set up. And if you notice, I have a bunch of forces and fixtures that are already acting on this scaffolding. So let's go and look at these one by one. So what I can see is I've got a total force of about 3,500 newtons that act, that's acting on this top for, uh, face for all these different beams. Then I've got a, a separate force that's acting on just this uh, beam structural member, and it's about 1,650 newtons. I've got the gravity acting downwards, and then I also have um, a one newton force acting on all the joints that are being formed. So what I'll do is I'll uh, turn on my uh, visibility and then we'll see the arrows and everything that we usually see in simulation. So over here you can tell uh, I've got a couple of force, couple of forces acting on it. These are all my joints for the beams, um, and uh, gravity is acting on one. Uh, gravity is acting downwards, and I've got the one newton force acting on all these four joints. If you notice, it's got a little uh, arrow. If I zoom out, it shows you the arrow. One, two, three, and four. Perfect. So I've got my study set up and I want to jump into the load case manager. In order to do that, you have to right click on your load cases where the study name is and then you'll see an option for load case manager. You select this option and as soon as you select it, you'll notice it opens up this window uh, down here and um, let's see what this window sh um, has. So what I can see right now, uh, I have this tab activated which says uh, load case view and over here I am looking at all the different fixtures that I set up in my parent study and all the different forces that I set up in my parent study as well. Um, I get the option for saving this view, um, this results and also like creating a report of this. So some other op uh, cool options for uh, uh, for us to you know you know display all the um, uh, results basically. So over here I notice an option for primary load cases and then load case combinations and then I have another option for track results, whatever I want to track. And the way this works is if I wanted to add a primary load case over here, so what I can do is I can click over here and it opens up with load case number one and you notice everything is suppressed in here. I've got the fixture, the references, but all my forces are suppressed. So let's say if I wanted to call this uh, dead load. So I'm only interested in uh, uh, loads that are being caused by the gravity or, you know, yeah, the load that is being caused by the gravity. So in this case, what I'll do is I'll keep my fixture and my other fixture active and I'm going to suppress all these. Uh, um, I'm going to suppress my 4.6, which is 3,500 newtons. I'm going to suppress my 4.7, which is 16.50 newtons. And I'm also going to suppress the one newton force that I have on all those four joints. And I'm only going to activate the gravity. So this is my gravity uh, force. And you notice it says suppress. All I have to do is click where it says suppress and just give it the value that it already has. So it's 9.8 uh, meters per second square and then you're gonna have zero and zero along the other directions so that is basically the setup for my dead load I can act, add more loads as well so let's say if I click on it here again and I wanted to add a different load let's call this life load and the life load what I want to do is I want to let's say I want to suppress all my gravity uh, um, you know um, values and then I want to unsuppress the other forces that I see. So gravity is already suppressed so we won't touch it. Uh, but as if I go under force 6 which is the 3500 newtons I can unsuppress it and just select the value. 
same 447. I can unsuppress it and select the 1650 from the list. And then the minus one Newton force that's acting on the joints. So just that simply, I'm able to add more loads and I can do com combination of these things. Um, um, next, once I'm done, we're going to actually do a combination of it. So what we want to do is, uh, let's say if I wanted um, two times some load, three times some load, I can write that mathematical equation under our load case combination. So if you click on it, you notice this uh, opens up this window and our two loads are already right here, dead load and life load. And what I can do is I can just kind of give it a multiplication factor. So I can say two times dead load and then I can say two times life load. So just like that, I'm able to kind of create this combination. You can add any mathematical equation in there uh, as long as it's linear. So this is going to do a linear calculation for you. So if you hit the green check, you notice the combination one comes up here. And then, of course, you can add more combinations uh, in this case. And then lastly is uh, where would you like to um, you know, add the sensor to track? So over here, if I click on it, it, um, it gives you the option for add sensor. And I can say, um, I can click on add sensor and you notice our sensor uh, uh, property manager is open on the left hand side and over here I can define what type of sensor I'm looking at. So I'm looking at our simulation data. I'm looking at our, um, let's say displacement. I want to see how far things move. And I want to look at the resultant displacements. Um, so I'll look at the resultant displacement in millimeters, um, maximum in the model across all steps. That sounds good. We'll hit the green check. And you notice uh, the displacement comes up here and you're looking at the resultant displacement. So once you have set this up, all you have to do is uh, let it run. And it takes you know, a few uh, minutes to run depending on how complicated uh, um, your uh, model is and how many loads you have applied, how many fixtures that are there. So all of those uh, scenarios are, you know, all of those boundary conditions actually do um, take part in the computational time uh, that so the solver requires, but it doesn't take too long. Let's say on this computer, it might take uh, you know five minutes or so to be able to to run this study. Um, but once you're done running, you, you will see the power of it. Uh, it lets you calculate the stresses and displacement based on the parent study, and we can do a couple of combinations um, and actually add loads as well and do combination of these loads. So pretty quick way of uh, um, calculating some um, some valid results uh, in order to make sure that our uh, scaffolding in this in, in this case is going to work fine or not. So as you see, it's still taking some uh, time to run but once as soon as it's done running we'll uh, um, you know we'll do some post processing um, and in the meantime I want to show you uh, I've got another results view tab over here so you know as soon as we're done with the load case view once this is done running I can jump on the results view and I'll show you the results that way or you can also scroll down to our uh, results folder and you'll notice two different folders over there uh, one with our parent study that was there and one would be our uh, the, the combination the load case results so um, let's see okay now that the study has been done running let's go ahead and do some post processing as you notice i'm already in my results view uh, results view tab and i've got my dead load life load and combination right here i've got my results um, uh, right next to and in, in the same column basically and what i can do over here is let's say if i click on life load what SOLIDWORKS does is, or what simulation does is, you notice it updates the uh, results. So corresponding to what uh, whatever primary or uh, whatever load case I click on. So if I click on the dead load, you notice uh, this changes the results pertaining to what are the dead uh, dead load combinations or you know the the forces that are acting on the dead load as compared to the forces that are acting on the life load. So I can look at it uh, separately. Now if I wanted to take a look at the combination of the two, uh, the equation that we set up, which is two times the dead load and two times the life load, I can select that option as well. And what it will do, you'll notice go ahead, uh, simulation updates the results as well. So this is very actively kind of updating to whatever uh, load case scenario you select. If you take your attention to the left side of the screen, you notice you have your results folder, the original results folder from your parent study right here, and then the load case results right here. 
So whatever you want to look at, you can just kind of double click on that and activate those results. Let's say if you just wanted to see the results over here and you don't want to see all these input loads, I can take these off by just clicking up here. Um, and if you wanted to take the results off, similarly, we can just click here and it takes the results off as well. Now, if I wanted to uh, throw all these results in a nice report, I can click on this uh, create report um, option and this will create a nice word uh, template based um, um, a word template based report and um, with all your um, stress results displacements results all your boundary conditions the materials that you're using everything that you need um, all the information that you need um, will be right there so um, I hope you enjoyed watching this video thank you for watching mm -hmm.